Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So I've had this Axminster Craft table saw for six weeks now, so I thought I'd give you my thoughts on it. In the last video about it, I put it together and I had loads of questions about it down below, so I'm gonna try and answer all of those as well. I'm not gonna give you all the specs and technical details, but I will put links down below to the Axminster website where all that information is available and they have a very nice color manual for it, which you can download there. So I got this saw in four separate parts. So I'll first show you what I got. So what I got was a saw, sliding table, cabinet stand, and mobile base. So we'll go through them one by one, but we'll start with the saw itself. So the saw has a nice thick cast iron top, and then to the side, it has a pressed steel extension wing, and one to the back that extends the mitre slots in, which is a nice feature, because then you don't have to cut them into your outfeed table. It's got standard sized mitre slots, and I already had an aftermarket mitre gauge, which fits great, but Axminster do sell one. And of course, this means that a lot of standardized accessories will work. I mean, Axminster sell these mitre bars made out of aluminium, Obviously you can make your own, but these have little grub screws in, so you can adjust them to get the perfect fit, and you never have to worry about wood movement. Now this saw is very accurate, and one of the reasons for that is, is everything's adjustable. The raise and fall mechanism on this saw is attached to the cabinet rather than the top itself. The top is attached with four bolts, so it can move independently to the blade to align it. Mine was pretty good, but I loosened off those four bolts, gave a few taps with a plastic mallet, and then brought the blade perfectly in line with the mitre slots. I could then get the fence lined up with the mitre slots, and then I knew it was parallel with the blade. Um, the riving knife's got four grub screws, so you can align that perfectly with the blade. The fence is fully adjustable, so everything can be adjusted on it. One person did comment that they had problems getting it to tilt with to 45 degrees. I think this might have been a previous model, but I've had a look at it on mine and I'll show you. So inside the saw, on the tilt mechanism, there's a collar like you get on a drill. And you can just adjust that to set it up at a perfect 45 degrees. So you can adjust the 45 or even just past it if you wanted. The fence on the saw has a little window with a magnifying glass and then on the rail there's a ruler. It's got a cam locking mechanism at the front and then it's got this auxiliary fence. Now I'm going to try and adjust this but I'm doing it from the side so it makes it much harder. So you can just have it as the fence. You can have this up that way, which makes resawing taller pieces easy. But then if you want to do thin rips, you can very quickly swap it over and then you can rip small pieces while keeping the crown guard on. Now I've had saws with these options before, but they've always been so tricky to do, I've never used them. But this is so quick and easy to change I use it all the time and that means I don't have to take the crown guard off which is great that safety features uh, are easy to use and therefore you use them and also it's got a uh, dust collection port on it so it works very well. Now a few people were concerned about the fence because it only locks at the front and not at the back. Now I've used a few saws that have uh, locking mechanisms at both ends and I've never got on with them because I find when they lock at the back they kind of try and twist it out of square and I've seen a lot of reviews of other saws and people say the same thing. Um, I think this is fine. Now if I really push I can maybe get a half a millimetre's deflection on that. but. I don't see why that's a problem. You should only be pushing towards the fence before the blade, and you shouldn't be pushing any pressure that way. I've never had a problem with saws of this design that are, that are well made, and this is. Uh, so I think the fence is very good on this. 
I had a few questions about how powerful this saw is, because if you compare the specs with some contractor saws, maybe it doesn't look as powerful. But it's not a fair comparison, because they have universal motors, and this has a nice quiet induction motor, and this is also belt driven. But this week I was cutting down some 3x2s, so I think they're 63mm deep. I was doing those in one pass. I also ripped down a few bits of oak this week, and it does that no problem at all. And at the moment, it's a bit handicapped because it has a 48 tooth blade in it. Now that leaves a beautiful cut, but it's not a ripping blade. You put a 24 tooth ripping blade, which acts means to do sell, I think this would have no problems. But if the main thing you want to be doing with this saw is ripping down hardwood, then I'm sure you're not really looking for this saw. You'll want something much bigger, more powerful, and a band saw is probably much better for that. Someone wanted to know what the blade change on this is like, and it's pretty simple. The crown guard just comes off with a few twists. Now there are five screws to hold this insert down, but I haven't actually been using them, and therefore you can just pull it out easily. This insert has some grub screws all round, so you can get it perfectly level, which is nice. They sell a zero insert one with a smaller slot, but it's a very simple shape with no complex locking me mechanism, so you could easily make your own. Now there's no spindle lock, there's just simply that bar that you drop in, spanner on, and loosen. It's got a reasonably good length of spindle, and it's very simple to change the blade. Which is good because I do like to swap between blades for different tasks. Um, someone asked about blade availability. So Axminster certainly sell a few in this size because this has got a nice 2.2 millimeters thin curve. And as I say, I'm probably going to get the 24 tooth one so I can do some ripping. But it's a common size 216 mil. In fact, my DeWalt Mitosaur takes the same size of blade. So as I mentioned, it's got a nice quiet induction motor. Now, I do have a decibel meter, but it appears to not be working. So I can't give you the levels, but what I can do is just turn it on. And that's pretty quiet. Hopefully you can just hear me talking in a normal voice over it. Now another question, which is a good point, is what's the point of having a quiet saw if your dust extractor is louder? So let me put this saw on and put the dust extractor on. So my dust extractor is definitely louder than the saw itself. So I would recommend, if you really want to keep the noise down, a different extractor. I've just got a cheap canister one, but I'll show you something else that will work better. Now, I have this pneumatic dust extractor. Same people that make the Henry Hoovers. It's really quiet, really great machine, but it has a 50-something mil hose, and the craft saw has a 100 mil port. But they do do a larger model of this with twin motors, so twice the power and a 100 mil hose, which again is quiet. So in an ideal world, I would pair those two machines together and I think you'd have a really good setup. So what's dust collection like on this machine? Inside, there's a plastic shroud around the blade that goes to a hose and then a 100 mil port at the back. Then you've got this large hose on the crown guard that goes to the same port, so you just connect to do the two things. With the both of them connected, it does a pretty good job. You're never gonna get amazing dust collection on a table saw, but this works well. As I say, I've only got a very cheap little extractor on this, because it's the only 100 mil one I've got. So I think actually if you had a more powerful extractor, you'd even get better results. But I'm very pleased how this performs. So I think that about covers all the main features of the saw itself. So let's move on to the accessories. Let's start with the sliding table. Now, 
I wasn't sure whether to go for this or not because you can see how wide my workshop is and it takes up a bit of room. But I'm so glad I did. What it's allowed me to do is get rid of my mitre saw station and now I use this for rip cuts and cross cuts. Um, so I've got it on a mobile base and I can turn the saw around if I want to do longer pieces and then I can have them go in the length of the workshop. It's probably more efficient to have both machines, but the amount of space I've saved by just having one is worth it. Uh, let me bring you in close and show you some of the details on this. So the fence goes up to 900 mil, got a nice flip stop, which has a micro adjuster, which I found so useful if you just cut something slightly too long and you can just really dial in that cut. It's got this very quick to adjust clamp with a cam locking mechanism, which is very useful if you want to cut any sheet goods as it really holds them securely. The fence itself can angle to 45 degrees in either direction. It's got a little flip up stop there so you can set it back to 90. But what I tend to do is, is put a square up against the blade and just get the fence level with that and that seems to work really well and quickly for getting it back to 90. So sometimes you want to rip some wood and this fence is in the way. So you can just loosen these off and slide it out the way or just lift it off and move it out the way. The whole thing slides really nicely but if you want to get it out of the way, there's a little pin and then you can just take the whole thing off and it goes back on very easily. So I'm really pleased I got this in the end. I don't think I could go back to not having one now. It works fantastically. Um, I did think originally, what would it be able to do that you can't do with a mitre gauge? But obviously you've got this much more table for supporting a workpiece, which is great. Having the stops for repeated cuts, uh, and it just slides so nicely. It's great, so pleased I got this. So, onto the cabinet stand. This line is where the saw stops and this is all stand. It's got a little cupboard in the side, which is really handy. I keep spare blades in there, the blade and riving knife changing tools, and one of these um, telescopic magnet things for every time I drop the nut in the saw, very handy. So that's, that's good. Um, they do do a leg kit if you don't want the stand, and of course you can make your own. But as this is essentially a cabinet saw, I thought it was nice to have the cabinet, and this is a very solid thing. So the other thing that I got, which I didn't have when I bought this saw and put it together, was the mobile base. I would bought one off eBay for about £40. There's lots around that price under different names, but they're basically the same thing. It came, it hadn't been welded properly, they'd only tacked it and not put a full bead down. So some of the bits you could just snap off with your fingers. Uh, rubbish, no instructions, no picture. So I returned that and I bought the Axminster one. Uh, I think they call it the heavy duty one. It's not the cheapest one they do. It's about 80 pounds, so twice as expensive as the other, but what a difference. It's such a nicer base. Um, and because I move this saw quite regularly, I'm glad I went for this option. I'll show you how easy it is to move. So to take the locking off, you just knock these paddles up, then, wheel it around really easily and lock it back down. So I think I've shown you everything and answered all the questions. So what are my thoughts on this saw? Well, you can probably guess, I'm very impressed with it. It's definitely the best table saw I've ever owned. It works great. I really can't think of many negatives about it. Um, I'm super pleased. I, I, it's a joy to use, really. Accurate, quiet, it's got enough power, dust collection's not bad. Um, 
yeah, does it all. Standard mitre slots. It's what I've been looking for for years. So I'm so pleased I've got it. Um, and I hope this was helpful to some of you. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreons. And please subscribe for more videos.